This video is about differentiation of T lymphocytes. This is a, a sore topic for a lot of people and a lot of people tend to uh, struggle with it so I will try to put down everything I know about uh, T cell differentiation. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the bone marrow. So that's where it all starts. So anything above this yellow line is going to be our bone marrow. So in the bone marrow, we have the pre-T cell being formed, okay? So anything above this yellow line is bone marrow. We have the pre-T cell. The pre-T cell comes to the thymus, okay? We have the pre-T cell uh, coming to the thymus here and forms CD4 and CD8 cells. They differentiate into CD4 and CD8 cells. But before they go and make CD4 and CD8 T cells, our T helper O cells go through something called positive selection okay and this positive selection happens in the cortex of the thymus okay so what exactly is positive selection so positive selection really means uh, the ability of the cell to at least bind to uh, the MHC class 1 or 2 weekly so what do I mean by that so for example that this is our T helper O cell and this has a T cell receptor right and this T cell receptor have to be able to bind to either MHC class 1 or MHC class 2 for it to do either of the functions either whether it's going to be cytotoxic or um, T helper cells it has to be able to bind MHC class 1 or 2 so if it can do it even weakly even if it has a little bit of ability to do that job, then they're positively selected. If they cannot do that job, then they are actually, they go through apoptosis. And, apoptosis. and the reason for that is because if they let us let those T helper cells, T helper O cells go, that they cannot bind to MHC class 1 or 2, they're going to be a problem because they're going to attack self, right? And they're going to destroy, they're going to cause autoimmune problem in the body. So that is positive selection. So positive selection is the ability of the T cell receptor that is going through selection uh, and its ability to at least bind to MHC class 1 or 2 with even with weakly. If it binds strongly, then that's great. Whether they can bind to the MHC class 1 or 2 weakly. So that is positive selection. And this positive selection happens in the cortex. And here is a, here is a histological section of, um, of a cortex. So let me orient you at what we're looking at. So you see these structures right here? These are the lobules. Okay? See how there is an inside lighter region and the outside darker region? So if I told you what would be the outside, uh, what would you say it is? It is the cortex or medulla? It's going to be the cortex, right? And the inside lighter region, it's going to be the medulla. So all these positive selection is going on in the cortex. Okay, That's what it really means. We have to be able to recognize the uh, histological section of the things that we're talking about because they can clearly give this little picture and then they, they can ask you where is um, the positive selection going on. So you know that the th it's the cortex that that's where the positive selection is. So this uh, orange region that I marked here is the thymus cortex and the positive selection is happening in this thymus the cortex of the thymus right now let's talk about the negative selection okay so the positive selection happens in the cortex the negative selection happens in the medulla so just like um, the orange region was the cortex this purple region that I marked is the medulla so in the medulla what happens um, the CD4 and the CD8 differentiation happens from the T helper O cell and we have our negative selection. And what exactly is negative selection? Negative selection it activate, active, actively eliminates cells which can show immune response to self proteins. So if they're showing that they're attacking self proteins then those cells cannot pass through negative selection. This is a very strict process uh, of removing those uh, T lymphocytes which 
uh, is going to attack self proteins. Now, once this differentiation happens, these T cells are now ready to leave the thymus and go to the lymph node. Okay, so it has moved from the thymus onto the lymph node. So we have in the lymph node we have our CD4 cells. Okay, these are our CD4 cells, and we have our CD8 cells. The CD8 cells becomes our cytotoxic T cells and the CD4 cells further differentiates into T helper 1 and T helper 2 cells. Now what's important to understand here is that T helper 1 cell is going to uh, support our cell mediated immunity where T helper 2 cell is going to support humoral immunity. What does cell mediated and humoral really mean? Cell mediated meaning that they are going to go into the tissues and they are going to take care of business. Humoral means they are going to patrol the blood okay, and they are going to take care of any kind of antigens and microbes that's there. Depending on what kind of products they are spitting out really defines what kind of helper cells it is. For example, T helper 1 is secreting IL-2, TNF and interferon gamma okay and because it's spitting out these three substances we're calling it T helper one cell what about then what about T helper two what kind of substances is that uh, spitting out it's spitting out IL four five six ten thirteen and T G F beta okay all right, so these are secreted by our T helper 2 cells. Now, there is more to the story than this. Whatever is made by T helper 1, so what is made by T helper 1? These are made by T helper 1. Is going to inhibit T helper 2 cells, okay? So this is going to inhibit uh, T helper 2 substances. And whatever is made by T helper 2, is going to inhibit our T helper 1. I'm going to write this in a fresh piece of uh, paper uh, so that it's clear because this this is getting a little bit too confusing here. So I have just rewritten the T helper 1 and T helper 2 and how they regulate each other. T helper 1 products is going to inhibit uh, T helper 2 and T helper 2 products is going to inhibit T helper 1. Okay now I'm going to add another layer to the story and that is T helper 1 is being made in the presence of an intracellular bacteria. Now, intracellular bacteria is really stimulating our T helper 1. But what about T helper 2? For T helper 2, it actually gets stimulated in the absence of T helper 1. Okay? When T helper 1 is not being proliferated by intracellular bacteria, that's when by default T helper 2 is being made. Now, why is T helper 2 being made by default? Because it, it's getting ready to protect the blood. It's creating interleukins like IL-4, which converts IgG to IgE. It's creating IL-5, which is making IgA. It's creating TGF-beta, which has anti-inflammatory properties and IL-10 also has anti-inflammatory properties. So both of these have anti-inflammatory properties. Now, IL-10 and TGF-beta are also secreted by something else and those are called a different class of um, T cells called the T regulatory cells. The T regulatory cells is also going to produce IL-10 and TGF-beta. Are you still with me? Because it's getting a little busy here, right? So T helper 2, among many interleukins, is making IL-10 and TGF-beta. T regulatory also produces IL-10 and TGF-beta. And we know that IL-10 has anti-inflammatory anti property, right? Now we can also safely say that then T regulatory cells also has anti-inflammatory property because it is secreting IL-10, obviously. 
But is that the only function of T regulatory cells? Not really. T regulatory cells also is responsible for regulating the production of all kinds of cells. Cytotoxic T cells, T helper 1 cells, and T helper 2 cells. So it regulates um, production and proliferation of all or uh, different all kinds of T cells. Now moving on with some other details is if IL-10 is anti-inflammatory or if it suppresses inflammation, what interleukin promotes inflammation? That is our IL-12. So now you must be wondering who is really making IL-12? IL-12 are made by the macrophages. These macrophages that's making the IL-12 is also promoting the production of T helper 1 cells. So in other way you can say that macrophage is uh, promoting inflammation because it's it's secreting IL-12 which is making more T helper 1 cells which is making more IL-2 interferon gamma and TNF beta and IL-12 is also promoting inflammation, all that is kind of related, right? There is something else which also promotes the production of T helper 1 cell, and that is interferon gamma. Hmm, that's interesting. Because interferon gamma is also produced by T helper 1 cells, then T helper 1 cells is, production of T helper 1 cells is promoted by interferon gamma as well. If interferon gamma is promoting T helper 1 cell, Who's making this interferon gamma? Not the helper 1 cell. This interferon gamma is coming from the natural killer cells. Okay? As a result, we can also say that natural killer cells also promote inflammation because natural killer cells are stimulating interferon, uh, is producing interferon gamma, which is stimulating the conversion of T helper O to T helper 1, which is, which is releasing IL 2, interferon gamma, and TNF beta right so they're all linked to each other now is IL-12 the only thing that is being made by the macrophages no macrophages are also other interleukins and they are IL-1, 6, 8, 12 right 12 and TNF alpha okay see how macrophages are making TNF alpha right but T helper 1 cells are making TNF beta I'm just making similarities and differences between all the different structures see IL-6 was also produced by T helper 2 cells right and it's also produced by macrophages so kind of memorizing these interleukins is kind of important so that you can navigate through questions really really easily and one last thing I wanted to talk about before ending this video is that the inhibition from T helper 2 to T helper 1 is not really achieved by all the interleukins. This is achieved by IL-4 and IL-10. Okay, And T helper 1 to T helper 2, this inhibition is uh, mediated by interferon gamma. So that was my interpretation of differentiation of T-cells.